Oi there, it's our last day aboard the Disney Magic. Come with us for a day at sea. But first, uh, brunch. Yeah. Hey there, ma'am fam, it is our last day aboard the Disney Magic. Um, the weather's not the best, but we're gonna make the most of it and have a great time. We've got Palo Brunch, we're going to go to the brand new Encanto celebration, do the sail away party, see the characters in their silver outfits one more time. But first, we got to go. The chicken parm is calling my name. Yeah. <sighs> one thing about Palo, you never leave hungry. If you do, you've done it wrong. True. That was an incredible brunch. I consider myself to be somewhat of a brunch connoisseur, and I would say Palo Brunch is my favorite brunch of all time. I think it'd be crazy if it wasn't. It's so, so delicious. The service is always impeccable. Shout out to Chinaro. He was our server last night. He was waiting for us again this morning. And much like the other servers on a Disney cruise, he already knew that we preferred sparkling water. He knew about Alan's allergy. He knew we loved coffee. Like, he already knows everything. He was a genuine Superb. treasure. Superb. Just, a, just a treasure of a human being. He even brought us a special latte that he made because he knew we liked coffee so much. He surprised us and made us a table-side beautiful latte. So... Thank you to him. If you are on a Disney cruise and you have Gennaro, he's the best. Absolutely. And I think it is a testament to listening to the cast members, listening to your servers, taking their suggestions. They know their locations in and out, and their suggestions are gold. So, um, as always, we took meticulous notes, and please enjoy Palo Welcome back to Palo Man Fam. This is the adults only Italian restaurant aboard the Disney Cruise Line ships. It has a beautiful view overlooking the ocean on the magic. Well, just imagine it be beautiful. It was a little rainy this day. It's $45 all you care to enjoy and that includes a welcome mimosa or glass of champagne. Now let's take a look at the brunch menu. You've got an antipasti selection. Again, this is all you care to enjoy. You can do a seafood version or a more classic version. They've got a couple of different soups, some sweeter options like waffles and pancakes, tons of different egg dishes. You've got Benedict's frittatas and omelets. Of course, you've got the famous Palo Pizza Stone where you can get a calzone or a variety of flatbreads. And then they have some entrees including different pasta dishes like an eggplant rollatini. They've got a ravioli, the famous Parmesan crusted chicken breast. Stay tuned for that. And then a couple of meats as well. Our brunch began as a tale of two carbs where we had both savory bread and sweet options. Personally, I went with the almond croissant, which was incredibly light and buttery and it was only lightly sweet. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I did dig into the full bread service later. For my sweet choice, I went with our server's recommendation, which was a lemon curd with some fresh berries and a light flaky pastry crust. It was divine, but I'm more of a savory girl, so I also jumped right into the savory bread basket, which features one of my favorite breads ever. It's a caramelized onion and gorgonzola focaccia dipped in that Italian olive oil. It is incredible. It is buttery, it is garlicky, it is cheesy. I love it. Of course, the antipasti never disappoints. It's delicious imported Italian's meats and cheeses, perfect with that bread service we had earlier. Now, I will warn you that you can get very full on this very quick, so eat sparingly, which is very hard to do. But if you're a meat and cheese lover, you're going to enjoy this. Up next were the egg dishes, and I started with the eggs Florentine, which are poached eggs on a toasted muffin with spinach and Mornay sauce, and this was incredibly balanced. You had the spinach, which was earthy, and the Mornay sauce, which added a little bit of richness on top, and a bite from some of the cheese within the sauce as well. The egg cooked perfectly, lightly runny throughout. I can understand why this is Molly's favorite. It was great. Nay. Incredible. And for something we hadn't tried at Palo before, I ordered the zucchini frittata. This is very, very simple. It's basically just egg and zucchini. But Gennaro, our wonderful server, said it was very classic Italian to take whatever was left over in the kitchen and make frittata. In fact, he said his mother used to make it with macaroni that was left over from the night before, and I will be trying this. <laughs> It's got a slightly gooey egg. It's seasoned just right. Simple deliciousness. If you're looking for a light egg dish, this is a good option. And by the time our pizza arrived, the weather had turned nice. The sun was out and we were ready to dig in. We got a half and half pizza, half margarita, half secret menu grape and gorgonzola. And that's the one that I tasted. And let me just tell you, this combination has no business being this good. The gorgonzola is sharp, a little funky, but that's offset by the grape's natural sweetness and the gastrique, which has some sourness to it as well. This flavor combination is out of this world. I hope that this makes it back on the main menu soon. But for now, it's on the secret menu, and now you're in on the secret. Ooh, secret times. As far as the margarita pizza goes, again, simple deliciousness, which is what this restaurant does well. I loved the fresh 
basil, the slight sweetness from the tomato sauce, the nutty cheese. Palo just crushes pizzas. The crust is always incredible and you must get it no matter which meal you go for. Now, you can forget everything else we've said about Palo thus far as long as you remember to do one thing. Order the chicken parm. It is so fantastic. It is lightly fried, crusted Parmesan chicken. I don't know how they get it so perfect every time. It's moist, it's delicious, it's got a little bit of nuttiness from the Parmesan cheese. It's paired with this perfectly cooked creamy risotto that still has that little bit of crunch on it, a little al dente. It is phenomenal, it is simple, it is delicious. I cannot recommend this enough. Go to Palo Brunch just to eat this chicken. And to round out our brunch, instead of a dessert, we went with the apple cinnamon Mickey waffle, and it was wonderful. Light and fluffy with a hint of that apple and cinnamon, along with the sweet syrup over top and whipped butter. This was a just bananas good waffle, and I have to say, incredibly filling. I wish we had ordered it a little bit earlier, but as it stands, it made a great dessert. Headed now into the D Lounge for the Encanto celebration. This is a brand new experience aboard the Disney Magic, and it, as the name would suggest, celebrates Encanto. So there's supposed to be characters and music and food and drinks. Super excited, and uh, I really, really, really want to meet Bruno. Oh, look how pretty it is. Hello. Look at it. Oh, it's so nice. Aww. So they've instructed us to get to work on our crafts they set out at the table, but the bar is also open. They've got alcoholic and non-alcoholic specialty beverages. They've got a couple of mixed drinks. They have Colombian beer, Colombian soda. They even have a souvenir and canto cup. Very excited to see what's gonna happen. We are trying the Colombian beer. I'm gonna share though, because we have a tasting later, so responsibility. That's us. Oh, that's nice. It's just a nice light beer. Reminds me of like a Heineken. Tasty. Yeah. Very, very, very light. And needed if we're gonna be working on crafts. We have to make crafts now. I'm gonna work on the flower. I'm making, I think, a butterfly. Tie a knot. You know, I never thought I'd have to craft on I'm you. Making a again. loop. It's so nice to meet you. I did not. I'm not. I'm not that talented. Who made your skirt, though? I did. You did? Oh, my hands. You're so talented. Well, it took many weeks to do this, but we finally got there. You did it. That's amazing. They even have a prediction on the side. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. It says magic awaits you. Ooh. Maybe that's your future. Yeah. Maybe. Bruno would let me know. But when did you get them? A couple weeks ago. And oh, maybe that was the prediction because you're on the magic. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Funny how things work. <sighs> we met Bruno. That was really cool. And Mirabelle. Yeah, that's true. But I've never met Bruno before. I've met Mirabelle in Disneyland. But Bruno, um, when the camera was off, when you were walking over to get our picture, I asked him <laughs> if he had a favorite rat, and he said his favorite rat is named Juan because he's number one. Wow. I'm glad we can talk about Bruno now. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> the Encanto celebration is super cute. It's definitely family focused. It's definitely kid focused. Trivia and sing alongs and little crafts. They do have some drinks and such. But of course, the highlight is that Mirabelle and Bruno join in at the end and you can meet them and get autographs and take pictures. I will say they were doing meet and greet some other times throughout the ship as well. So if you didn't want to do the whole hour long Encanto experience, you could just meet Mirabelle and Bruno on the ship. But really, really fun. It was a good time. I Listen. I just want to acknowledge how sneakily Mirabelle and Bruno made their way into the conga line towards the end there. They were just like stealthy, sly They were very, very situation. Yeah, It was great. And up next on our activity docket is the mojitos and caipirinha tasting. This cost $50 per person. It was the most expensive of our tasting and educational experiences, and I'm looking forward to it. I have had a mojito. I don't think I've ever had a caipirinha. They're very, very tasty. Or maybe I've had one and it wasn't good and I didn't like it, but I have faith that Ospie will make delicious ones. I 100% agree. Why you two uh, just
Junior L. It goes very well with the Jamison. They are the nice partners. So when it comes for the Jamison. Well, which of the bar we sell a Dolby one boat? Frozen Dolby. treats. Huh? Frozen treats. <laughs> I want this one too. But it's aged in the Connect Cars well. That's the reason you have a more of the big bike when you come for the sipping with these. But now it's getting more and more popular. It was a Brazilian uh, a national drink, but now it's an international uh, classic cocktail. If you're preparing any uh, caipirinha, you have to be two ounces. Then it's going to be the, the granular sugar, two, or two packs. Or if you're using a simple syrup, you can go with the half ounce of the simple syrup. The half ounce of the orange passion. All right, family, you ready? Yeah. Good job, you're a champion too. Thank you. Well, another uh, educational experience. This time about mojitos and caipirinhas. I've never had a caipirinha. I don't know that I'm gonna have many more after that. They yeah. are strong. Casaja has a very like strong flavor, kind of punches you in the mouth, and I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. What I do love about these tasting classes though, I've said it before, is that the bartenders get a lot of freedom as to what they present. And Osvi, who we've had for all of our tasting classes aboard the Magic, loves to create things. Um, and he did an Irish mojito, which mm. was Jameson instead of rum, which I loved. Um, and I will be making that at home. And by I will be, I mean, I'm gonna request that Alan does. I will be making that at home. <laughs> Uh, but like we've said before in these other cruise line videos, the tasting classes are really fun if you are 21 and up, you like to drink alcohol, you like learning about new things. I love these classes because you can learn about how to make the different drinks, the history of the different drinks, um, some tips and tricks on how to bartend, and I just think they're a fun experience. And I, I really do think they're worth the cost as well. Um, you don't get four full-size drinks, obviously, or you'd be on the floor walking out of there, um, but I think that the cost for the alcohol and the drinks that you do get, plus the education and the entertainment, I think it's worth it for me. So I suppose we take our winnings. Yeah, we won a lot. Some might say too much. I think everyone hated us. Huh? This is what we get for doing our job well. Mm. We always research the ships before we get on them, and Alan always makes a handy little guide, and then I make the shot list, and we've done all the research, and we know all the things about the ships so that we can share the information, and it just so happens that Osby, when he does the trivia to give away the drinks he's making on set, um, they're about the ship. And I can't help it that we know the answers, okay? And I can't help it that I'm really competitive. <clears throat> Speaking of competitive, let's go to trivia. Yeah. Trivia aboard the Disney Magic takes place at O'Gill's Pub, which is one of the uh, adult bars in the after hours section of the ship. All the Disney Cruise Line ships have trivia. Some of them are adults only, some of them are family, some of them are just for kids. All different themes. You can find these and all the other activities in your uh, Disney Cruise Line app, which I highly recommend taking a look at when you first get on board. You can favorite things and that way it shows up on your schedule for the day. Turns out we're better at bar trivia than we are at Disney cult classic trivia. I don't know what that says about us. It says we haven't seen that darn cat. Hmm. Yeah. But the Hocus Pocus questions nailed them. Oh yeah, we, we crushed those. Well, now we're gonna go grab some iconic chicken tenders, prep for the stage show, our dinner, and then the character Palooza. But until then, we'll see you later. So we saw the show. Disney Dreams. <sighs> that was a good show. That was definitely the best one. I love a montage best show. It. You love a medley. I so. do love a medley. And I love it when we get Lion King and Cinderella and Little Mermaid and Aladdin and Peter Pan. And Anna and Elsa. Yeah, I wonder who they booted to put Anna and Elsa into the show. Because <laughs> this is an old show. So somebody got kicked out. Listen, old show or not, the effects were incredible. They were very, very good. I and think throughout the entire sh uh, run of the shows, the effects have been really good. The cast was great, and to me, that's what Disney Cruise Line Entertainment is. It's like a bunch of characters, magical moments. It was wonderful. So definitely my favorite one that we saw on board. Absolutely. I fully agree with you. I mean, that's not to slight the other two shows at all. I just think this one hits right in the feels. So. I cried. Spoiler alert. We are all so surprised. I know. This is brand new information. I never have them before. It never. Not a singular time. Now, it's time for dinner. Yes, it's our last dinner aboard the Disney Magic. We are eating at Lumiere's tonight, which mm -hmm. is a French-inspired restaurant, of course, named 
for Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast. Excited to see what that is like. And then it's on to the sail away goodbye party, which is always sad. Just really sort of a character palooza. I hope we can finally meet Mickey in his cute silvery jacket. We'll make it happen. Well, now this is a unique find. Walking through the corridor to find somewhere quiet to record a little bit, and we found these Disney Cruise Line fun facts. And if there's one thing I love, it's a fun fact. For example, the ship can make 500,000 gallons of fresh water from seawater every day while cruising. The 20,000 gallons of paint it takes to cover our ship could paint 2,000 average American homes. There are 5,390 pillows on board. Now that's just wild. Over 8,000 cups of coffee are served on board, and only 1,000 of those were mine. <laughs> the tonnage of our anchor compared with the weight of three elephants, it looks as if they're equal. Whoa. And last but certainly not least, this ship is approximately as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Wow. And much higher than Space Mountain. And much higher than the giant from Mickey and Giant Land. <laughs> Aw, I love that. That was cute. One thing I will say about a Disney ship is I love the little touches of Disney, and while I don't see it as overtly on this ship as I do aboard the Wish, it's definitely still there, and I've definitely still gandered at every piece of artwork and every picture frame as we've walked aboard the ship. Took a moment to pack our suitcases and leave our luggage out. If you would like the Cruise Lion Castlewars to take your luggage off, you need to have it outside your room ready to go at the assigned times, which means anything you want to wear tomorrow, pajamas, toiletries, etc., you'll have to carry off. If you would prefer not to do that, then you can get off the boat first, bright and early, and take your own things. We've done both. It really just depends on what plans we have that day. But for me, I do like not having to lug my giant suitcase off the ship if I can help. And I also like sleeping in a little bit more. That's true as well. Finished a lovely final dinner aboard the Disney Magic. Got our bottle of wine. If you remember from the first Disney Magic video, we talked about the wine package and we didn't drink all four of them. So we get to take one home. It was the one we enjoyed up at Palo. So now when we're sad that we're not on the cruise ship, we can drink it at home and cry thinking about how we're not at Palo. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and watch our little sail away gathering party, our character Palooza. But while we do that, we've taken extensive notes on our meal and that's what you're gonna see. Cheese the notes. No. Walking into Lumiere's, it had a beautiful Beauty and the Beast mural, as well as some really cool light fixtures that mirrored the rose and rose petals falling. But let's dive into the menu. For your appetizers, you had wonderful things like iced lobster and jumbo shrimp, as well as Gaston's escargot. You also had soups and salads like the potage permitere and the farmhouse salad. Some main courses include crispy roast duck breast and roasted rack of lamb. They also had some vegetarian options like wild mushroom stuffed pasta, as well as some lighter notes like the grilled grain-fed sirloin steak and oven-baked filet of salmon. Started things off with the bread service, which was warm French country bread with an olive tapenade. Classically good French bread, soft interior, nice crisp on the outside. But the olive tapenade surprised me because I thought I didn't like olives. But this was delicious, salty, briny. Maybe I do like olives. I started my meal with the French onion soup, but seeing as Molly had two of those for her main, I'm gonna let her take that one and instead tell you about the red wine Bosch pear salad with arugula, sliced red onions, and crispy lardons dressed with a sherry wine dressing and served with a red wine poached Bosch pear. It was a really good balance of sweet, acidity, and fattiness between the vinaigrette, the pear, and the bacon. And honestly, at this point in the cruise, I desperately needed some vegetables, and this was not only fitting the bill, but very, very tasty and balanced. I started things off with the breaded and deep fried brie, which is a big chunk of brie cheese, and it's served with an orange and cranberry chutney. This was certainly good. I am definitely a cheese lover, but I will say it was a little lackluster flavor-wise, especially compared to some of the cheesy dishes I had earlier on the ship at places like Palo. I also had the farmhouse salad, which was baby spinach, asparagus, cherry tomatoes, fingerling potatoes, served with a goat cheese crostini, and an olive vinaigrette. I, too, desperately needed a salad, so it tasted amazing, though... I don't think I would have said the same thing on day one. In reality, the produce was all nice and fresh. I liked the saltiness of the olive once again, and I love a goat cheese crostini. So nothing extraordinary, but a pretty solid salad to start with. For my main, I went with the ahi tuna niswa, which is seared ahi tuna with green beans, potato, olives, red onions, sliced egg, and a parsley garlic vinaigrette. This was really good quality tuna, which surprised me, and it was light and fresh, seared well. The olive and tomato added a lot of brightness to the dish, and the parsley vinaigrette was a great compliment. All in all, a very solid dish. And for my main course, I did in fact order 
French onion soup. Now, I only expected one bowl, but Andre and Josh, our servers, were amazing, so they brought me two. It was a very classic bowl of French onion soup. There was hearty broth, a bunch of cheese, and the Gruyere cheese crouton. Is this the best French onion soup I've ever had? No, but again, I was very, very full, didn't feel like consuming a full entree, and really this speaks to the excellence of the cast members who want to make sure you're happy and do things like bringing you two bowls of soup instead of one. And now for dessert. The dessert menu had things like the Grand Marnier Souffle and the Apple Tarte Tatine, but I went with the Tahitian Vanilla Creme Brulee. And this was just a standard creme brulee. Very fresh, with a good vanilla flavor and a nice brulee on top. Is it my favorite creme brulee I've ever had? No, but it was solid and a nice way to end the meal. And I opted for the Strawberry Shortcake Sundae, which was vanilla ice cream topped with strawberries, whipped cream, and shortcake. This was perfectly fine. Who's gonna be mad about an ice cream sundae? I liked the strawberries, though it did have a little bit more of that artificial flavor that I don't love. I enjoyed the pieces of shortcake, but mostly I feel about the sundae the way I feel about everything in this restaurant. Perfectly fine and unoffensive, but not a memorable meal. On your last night aboard a Disney cruise ship, they usually do a little sail away goodbye party where all the characters come back out and you get to say goodbye one last time. But what they don't usually advertise is that there is a character palooza where a bunch of the characters, usually Mickey and the gang, the princesses, maybe some other characters, come out and you can do one final round of meet and greets. They happen really, really fast, so I always recommend getting to this show early, hoping they do that here because I really want to see Mickey with his cute sparkly teal outfit. Hi, Mickey! I love your outfit. <laughs> you look stunning. Hi, Pluto. Look how cute you look. <laughs> you look like the best you look. Donald. Look at your cute outfit. I love it. So fashionable. <laughs> Okay, well, that was quite the character palooza. We finally got to see Mickey in his adorable silver anniversary uh, teal sparkly blazer, and it was incredible. Awesome. Um, he was the goal, but then we also luckily got to meet Pluto and Donald and Captain Hook. So it was a fun little final farewell aboard the Disney Magic, and just as a friendly reminder to be courteous to your fellow guests, this is not the time for long, drawn out character interactions. Yeah. They're trying to see as many people as possible. So quick photo, quick autograph, and then boogie on, because then you get to see more people too. And at the end of the character Palooza, you get to have a farewell with the, all the characters and some of the cast that you've seen from a lot of the shows, which was, I didn't expect that. Yeah, that was I've cool. not seen that on the other ships. They actually had the the performers, like the some of the ruffians and some of the other kind of like pirate night folks as well. Yeah. Like that was really neat. Also, they were signing, which was really sweet. Yeah. They were signing Mickey, the Mickey Mouse farewell song. So it was it was a cute way to end end a wonderful trip. Uh, okay, so let's talk about some of the best and worst uh, from the cruise. Let's start with uh, the worst and the move to the best. What was your worst of the cruise? Um, I would say, especially coming off the wish, the quick service dining oh. was pretty mediocre. Um, Cabanas was fine, as always. The quick service out on the pool deck was fine. But on the Disney Wish, the uh, Marsley Market, which is their buffet restaurant, and then the Festival of Foods, as I'm still trying to get it uh, to be called, out on the pool deck with Donald's Cantina and everything, that food is far superior. So I was missing that a little bit. Interesting, for me it was, uh, and this is something that I did not expect if I'm being honest, on the Disney Wish, I loved the themed bar. So you had like a Star Wars themed bar. You had something like Nightingales, which was very deep cut Cinderella themed. Um, Princess and the Frog. Uh, oh yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Hooks Barbary as well. Having some of those areas that were so heavily themed and then coming to the Magic and not having those areas and just, now granted the lounges were all great and we had the new Soul Cat Lounge, which was probably my favorite spot, but uh, it was it was a weird thing that I didn't expect that I would miss, and I honestly wonder how I would feel about the dream or the other ships now. Like, like the, I guess we have to go back on the dream and or the fantasy to oh find no, out. Oh, science. So Some sad. <laughs> but yeah, that was a surprise for me. Yeah. Uh, what about your bests? Bests. Um, 
obviously Palo. Anytime you can do Palo on a Disney cruise ship, go, go, go. I would say if I was gonna pick one, I would do brunch over dinner, just because I think brunch is so amazing and it's just a superior experience every single time. Yeah, Could I say like it's exquisite. I would also just... <laughs> it's really good. It's a really good meal. <laughs> Uh, I also really enjoyed the new Encanto celebration. Uh, that was a fun new addition. It was exciting to get to do that. And the Soul Cat Lounge, which is brand new, and meet some unusual characters aboard the ship. For me, uh, another thing that I didn't expect, it's full of unexpected things for me, was uh, using more of the adult spaces than I have before. Now, whenever we've gone on, say, the Dream or the Wish, for the Dream specifically, we were there with friends, so we didn't really use the spaces other than just to hang out. And then on the Wish, it was booked, so it and was the really... adult the adult pool area is very small on the wish. So going to places like the rainforest room and using the adult areas that are a little bit more spacious to luxuriate and relax, um, that was a surprise sort of stealth win for me. On top of all the stuff that you mentioned, but um, that that really took it. Specifically, the rainforest room. I honestly enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It's lovely. I never considered myself a spa person, but that was. Amazing. That's a, a hidden gem aboard a Disney cruise ship is mm -hmm. the Rainforest Room. Absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, I mean, we have to highlight the amazing cast and crew. Oh. Uh, we specifically interacted with so many wonderful individuals. So uh, we're going to name the ones that we loved the most when we were here. But let's just be clear. To all the cast who are staffing and crewing these ships, just thank you. Whatever you think of Disney services, it's plus stuff. Like from remembering things that we liked at the dinner table to the towel animals to just everyone's desire to make sure everyone every guest has a perfect trip the cast members on disney cruise line are like no other they're amazing so for us a special shout out to osfi who led all of our drinking seminars we literally signed up for more just because osfi was so wonderful uh, another shout out to luisa who was with osfi in the keys lounge and was there to help all of our classes uh Gennaro. Oh, from Paolo. He was so sweet. He was our server at dinner. He came back for us at brunch. He remembered Alan's allergy. He brought us special coffee. He was just a, a true prince. Love Gennaro. Amazing. Craig from the Soul Cat Lounge, who uh, made an incredible Manhattan for me on our first night. And then... Made it uh, a little interactive with the shaker and everything. That was so was cool. Awesome. And then huge thanks to both Andre and Josh who are our servers at our meals throughout our rotational dining experiences. Just stand out. I mean, what they did for you is incredible. Andre, on the first night we had Animator's Palette, I told him the truffle per set raviolis are one of my favorite foods. I was so excited to eat them. I asked for an entree sized portion of them instead of getting a regular entree. And then he brought them to me every single night to the other restaurants. He surprised me every night with these raviolis as just like a sweet little treat. Amazing. And that's what I love about doing the rotational dining on Disney Cruise Line is you get to know the cast members. They knew what everyone wanted to drink at the table. They knew about allergies. They, uh, Audrey was telling jokes and riddles and uh, it was awesome. Just, this is just a, another way of saying, and we, we've said it so much, but I think it's worth saying at least one more time is, the cast and crew on these ships are the pixie dust that makes this place work. Um, be nice to the crew, be nice to cast. They know this area, they know these ships better than anybody ever could. So just, if you have a question, ask, and they are all wonderful. So just, you know, be nice to crew. So I think we're gonna hit the hay, gotta get up bright and early and drive back to Orlando from Miami. But thank you so much for watching not only this video, but our entire Disney Magic series and frankly, all Mammoth Club videos. We yeah. couldn't be Thanks doing fun adventures like this without you. you. Um, what else do you want to see? We've got more travel on the horizons, want to do more cruises. So if there's a particular ship or experience, like one of the themed cruises or even a non-Disney cruise, let us know what you want down in the comments. In the meantime, folks, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new, follow us on all of our socials. If you want to join in on the conversation, give us suggestions on things to do, where to travel next, join us on Discord. The links are all down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been truly so magical. Yeah. Good night. Night, everybody. I need a salad. I need so many green things. Salad. Just like vegetables. Just water and salad. Just like give me asparagus. My body would like that. Just only asparagus. Mm-hmm.